Hello and welcome back to Scale Modeling Cafe and welcome to the next part in the Edward Spitfire buddy build that I'm doing with Rick Lawler from the Propaganda Channel. We're both building Edward Spitfires with a multi theme and mine starts uh, this episode with the construction. So uh, I'm doing my usual here of using black super glue to glue the fuselage halves together. There's a number of reasons why I use this and not traditional modeling cements. Uh, the main one is um, speed and it completely eliminates the need, or not the need, but the risk of any shrinkage. So I just use this old blade and I just run the super glue along the seam. And then you can uh, see there's another bottle next to super glue, that's accelerator. So I'll squeeze the two fuselage halves together, just making very sure that they're aligned and there's not going to be any steps or anything. And then what I'll do is I'll come in with this uh, little brush here and I'll apply the accelerator. The super glue I'm using is Ammo's. It uh, has some working time, so it's not going to bond instantly. So you do have that time to make sure everything's aligned. But hitting it with the accelerator means that it'll go off um, within a few seconds. And there you can see, that is now dry. Just to make sure that I'm not going to have any gaps at all, I will normally run a little bit of extra super glue just along the seam. When using accelerators, uh, the chemical reaction means it can generate a little bit of gas. You can get some little bubbles. But by doing this, A, um, hopefully you should be filling um, those if there are any. And if there are any little bits where the uh, the glue is going to, you know, hasn't done its thing, it's not stopped properly, or there's a bit of a gap, it will fill those. It's a really good filler, actually, for seams, this black super glue. It's got some kind of... Uh, rubberized type chemical in it which means it's not as brittle as normal super glue um, so the risk of cracking is uh, is a lot less and then straight away we can go in with the sanding sticks so uh, going in with a relatively coarse one initially and taking care not to sand a flat spot the kind of far nose cowling is is actually really rather flat but the Obviously, the uh, the rest of the fuselage is rounded, so I do try and be careful. Using a little bit of water where I can. Uh, that just helps to lubricate the, um, the sanding stick. Uh, it's less prone to scratching, that kind of thing. And then just we'll just go in and we'll just sand that seam and using some finer grit. And eventually it'll all be ready. So at uh, this section of the video, it's almost in real time. So you can see how quick it is. Uh, I do go along and I check with my fingernail and uh, if I can feel anything then um, I'll just go in and add just a little bit more of the super glue as a filler, making sure it goes right up to the windscreen mount. And I'm just spreading it all along that seam just to uh, just to make sure. Go with the accelerator again, and then we can go in and uh, sand it all down and flush. And just checking it by sight, checking it with the fingernail. And that all seems good. 
I did actually get a little bit of super glue where I didn't want it. The, it can be a little bit stringy when it gets a bit old. And at this part of the fuselage, there is some raised detail. Uh, so I didn't want to sand the uh, excess away. So I just go in with this debonder stuff and that will just dissolve it and uh, you can wipe it away. But if you have used accelerator on it, um, it does dry rock hard. So you do need to be careful. And I'll just go and rub that all away. And that does a great job of just cleaning, cleaning up my mess. There we go, all gone. Now to restore the panel lines. I find it easier these days, uh, I'll go in with a saw. I've got a specialist tool from RB Productions, but um, this seam was, uh, it's actually quite large. So went in with the, uh, with the big saw and then just switched it round to the finer edge. Uh, it's actually quite a tight curve and it does a really good job of scribing over that super glue, which can be um, a little bit more hard than the surrounding plastic. So the saw does a really good job, actually. Just knocking back any burrs with a sanding sponge. Again, using my finger just to feel, see if there's any raised ridges anywhere. And then we'll just go in with a bit of cement and that'll just, um, if there's any burrs or any stubborn sanding dust, that'll take care of that. And it makes the repaired seam line, or sorry, the pair, repaired panel line homogeneous with the rest of the panel lines. Once we've taken care of the panel lines, we can go in and re restore the rivets. So this is a Rosie the Riveter. Um, it uh, matches the distance between the kit um, rivets quite well. And I'm just going over uh, where the rivet line should be. So just sort of hunting around to try and put the teeth into the existing rivets. And then once I've found it, then I'm confident it's all going to match up. A little bit more complicated here on the nose because the uh, there are two rows of the rivets and they are mismatched. They're not even. So um, again, really important to try and get everything lined up. Now I can glue this bulkhead in. Uh, this is slightly out of order from the instructions that would have you put it in as you put the fuselage together but i just find it easier just to slot it in after uh, afterneath <laughs> afterwards from underneath inventing my own words here now this um this bit in the front can go in and uh, obviously this is going to be what the spin is going in but no i'm only gluing it on one side and that's going to help um, potentially with the fit of the tropical filter that's going to come later on. I'm just using a bit of tape just to hold everything in place. Uh, note I'm not gluing that bit underneath the nose. Again, I want that free to move to help with the fit of the Vox filter. Two part elevators quite straightforward the seam actually is not on the leading edge it's uh, running along a panel line um, just behind the leading edge and this is a really great system because that panel line was there in real life and it means you don't have to do any sanding so I really like that engineering now for the wings and I've painted the inside of the wheel well um, an aluminium color and now I'm applying the sky blue, which was the underside color. So um, if you read the documentation on Spitfires, the wheel well itself, where the wheel is, was classed as part of the underside. So the gear leg, the wheel hubs, and the uh, 
wheel bay roof was the interior color. The inner portion was counted as the um, internal bits. So they were painted in uh, an aluminium color. Just gonna go in with this uh, oil wash here. It's pre-mixed, um, it's good stuff. I've had this for a little while, it hasn't separated yet, like some of the enamel products uh, will eventually over time. And uh, I just grabbed it for speed, if nothing else. But it does a good job. I'm just using a cotton bud to clean up the excess. Now to build up the wheel wells, they're multi-part. Uh, it is quite complicated, so definitely worthwhile following on the instructions. All these parts, as you've seen, were pre-painted on the sprues. And I'm just removing the paint from the gluing surface, just with a mix of sanding sticks and uh, the edge of the scalpel blade. And then we can just touch in a tiny bit of glue. And then this is the gear leg mount. So it's really important to get this in the right place. This is going to set the angle of the undercarriage legs. Now actually when uh, at the end of the build when I came to fit the undercarriage legs the joint is not that positive it doesn't just sort of solidly click into place I think they could have made the the sort of the pin and the hole a lot longer which would have uh, helped immeasurably but there we are it is what it is. So this is obviously part of the inside of the gear leg bay and also sets the dihedral. So it's important that that is seated properly. Otherwise you are going to get fit problems later on. And then it's just a question of uh, taking your time and working your way around and getting the wheel bays all done. Would be nice if they could do some 3D printed one piece wheel bay inserts that would be nice because you are left with a couple of seams but then I suppose if you think about it most people don't um, look inside up inside wheel wells and go oh look there's a seam there um, normally they're just sat on the sh on the shelf so you know if they were to do it is it worth the investment maybe maybe not and just with the dry fit there you just see how uh, how that looks really quite nice now we put it all together uh, the fits really good um, I'm doing the dual combo which has got the B and the C so it's important to follow the instructions carefully so you don't use the wrong bits now quite helpfully um, the uh, instructions for the B is first and then there's the instructions for the C so there's no kind of multi-part one instruction booklet um, or one set of inst instructions for both variants. They are separated, which I really like. So hopefully it should be fairly straightforward. Just make sure you don't accidentally look at the wrong one. So just squeezing there, applying the pressure until the glue goes off. Uh, it grabs quite quickly this stuff um, as you can see there I'm just brushing it along the seam and then just making sure it hasn't spilt anywhere before I grab it otherwise yeah that's opening up a whole world of pain just making sure the wheel wheels there are not interfering with the fit and checking double checking just applying a little bit of tape there just to hold the trailing edge down pegs are useful too and then just going in um, this is a little bit later when the leading edge has had a chance to go off a little bit just running the glue along the seam this is why I like this brush from ammo it's super pointy so it's really precise
I can't resist a dry fit at this stage. Starting to look like a Spitfire, but I'm just checking the wing root seam. Just checking for slight gaps uh, and if there's any steps or anything like that. So these parts are separate. Uh, simple job just to glue those in place. I guess that's done for moulding reasons. The uh, camera hole for the gun camera, that's been drilled out on the other side already. So just putting a little bit of glue in there first, so when I come in and actually put the part, it will grab on. And then I can just seal it up with a very small amount of glue and then just backfill it with some more glue for a stronger joint. And we'll set that aside to dry. So a wing to fuselage joint is, uh, is pretty good. It's a complicated build. Um, you do have to be careful, test fit as you go along, make sure everything lines up. I'm just checking there with my thumb, see if there's any steps. It's pretty good. It's no armor hobby hurricane, but it's still pretty good. Having dealt with the seams on the leading edge, do need to go in and replace the rivets. Now, this time I'm using the Galaxy Tools uh, riveter. And this has got separate heads, separate wheels. So it's uh, slightly different uh, caliber. Is, is that the right word? Caliber or distance between the rivets than the fuselage. So I just use that one to try and match it up. Now for the rest of the wing. So this is the B, and um, yeah, bit of a faux pas, as you'll see in a minute. But anyway, ailerons go in. and the very famous wingtips. So this does include in the kit, there are parts for the clip wingtips. So if you wanted to use those, um, you can. Also in, included in the kit is the Abukir filter, rather than the big Vokes one under the nose. So uh, you can make any Spitfire 5 from this boxing. Fit of the wingtips is pretty good. You will see later that I do use a quick line of Mr. Surfacer, just as a belt and braces, just to seal things in. So you can see there the painting of the around the wheel wells. That means um, I'm not going to have to mask it. That's a really good tip, actually, um, and I'm using that more and more. So it's a fairly quick process, very satisfying, such a classic shape, that Spitfire wing. Really looks the part, just making sure everything's lined up and it all matches. Right, here's the faux pas, I used the wrong ailerons, so uh, <laughs> they were pulled off and the uh, fabric ailerons put back on in their place. This was an early bee. Uh, the instructions said that this seam had to go, so uh, use this uh, thick surfacer from Ammo. Now, um, they do claim it doesn't shrink. It does a little bit, uh, which is kind of inevitable. In hindsight, I think probably using the superglue would have been better, but I thought I'd give it a go. I did get a slight go seam a little bit later, so... You know, um, maybe I didn't use it properly. Maybe I'll put it on a little bit too thick. I don't know. Okay, this is where I deviated from the instructions. So the rear part 
the fairing for the uh, tropical filter, that goes onto the wing first because I wanted to make sure I'd had a really good fit here. I did use a little bit of Mr. Surfacer in the end um, just to seal in uh, the seam. Didn't really need it if I'm honest. And just backfilling the glue just for a stronger join. And then just manipulating it, just slight bit of pressure, just to make sure it's going to be seamless. Again, test fit, test fit, test fit. And that's looking good. So the instructions would have you build the entire tropical filter and then just add it to the airframe. But uh, I decided to do it this way um, just to try and help the fit. Now for the main event in uh, any aeroplane model and that is the wing to fuselage joint. Again, as I've said, it's pretty good. Not perfect, but it's pretty good. It's no armor hobby hurricane. But uh, still really good it's just a slight step at the back there but I'm confident enough to deal with that later so we'll just start gluing it up and again this is the advantage of this applicator brush it's so so precise um, really like it you can be really accurate with it you don't need to flood the join you can just put the glue exactly where it's needed and then just a little bit of pressure and that will set up nicely. And then it's just a question of working ourselves around. We'll just hold it in place for a few seconds. Maybe add a little bit more. Just see a little hairline gap appearing at the back. So I'm trying to seal it in with the glue. And if that doesn't work, we'll just hit it with a little bit of surfacer a little bit later on. That's easily dealt with. And then not forgetting that seam at the front. I have had it before with Edward Spitfires that there's a bit of a gap from those separate wing root leading edge parts to the actual leading edge, but it wasn't too bad on this one. So on the real aeroplane, there wasn't a panel line here. Um, it's The engineering is such that you do get a really sharp trailing edge, but you know it does result in this inevitable seam so i'm just going in with the surfacer here and i'll just build it up until it uh, completely covers the join and then that'll all be sanded down with a sanding sponge just so i can stick with the contours and uh, just feather it all in And then while I had the surfacer, I just thought I'd do all the other seams. May as well. Belt and braces. Probably didn't need it. But while I've got it there, I may as well. Just a couple of coats, just to make sure. And then I'm going to go around all the other seams. You can see I've done the wing tips there as well. I'm just going to do all the seams around the Volks, uh, the Volks filter, tropical filter. Again, probably didn't need it, but it's the belt and braces approach. If there are any sort of microscopic gaps or anything like that that will show up under paint, this will fill it all in. And any excess is just going to get removed with a little bit of thinner and a cotton bud. Try not to use the hotter fillers, otherwise you will affect the plastic. So I did do a bit of sandage here just to match up the seams and then got out the MDC punch just to replace these rivets and ended up 
doing the entire thing, actually. Um, not the entire airframe, but just where these bigger fasteners were because I thought it just looked um, a lot nicer. Now the tropical filter is such a feature of these multi spit fires, it has to be correct. And doing it this way, I did find, I did get a really good fit actually. So as you saw earlier, the underside of the nose was not glued in just so I could manipulate the uh, width of the nose if I needed it. But it fitted really well actually. Here's the oil cooler with the photo etch. Photo etch was a little bit too big actually. And it did interfere with the fit, so it did need it sanding down. So these are the brass cooling pipes. They give a nice splash of colour in there. The brass barrels, these are from Master. I mean, they just slotted in uh, pretty much with the dry fit, but I did glue them. So these are the one for the B, obviously, and you get a little bit of resin for the tips. And that's pretty much it with the canopy on and mast we are ready for paint and that's going to be the subject of the next video and we'll have a look at rick's model now um not a great deal to show uh, he just followed the instructions same as me and uh he's actually started painting his by the time i filmed it as i mentioned in the next episode is it going to be all about the painting and weathering all the markings were sprayed on, so custom masks. Gives a really nice result, really shows off that surface detail. Do a bit of hairspray chipping, which yes, does work with MRP. And we get really filthy with oils underneath. And I'll just show you a few pictures of where Rick's at. So he's done his base coat. A different technique to me. So um, pop across, watch his videos. And uh, yeah, be interesting to see, to compare the two different approaches. So until the next one, cheers, bye-bye.